I really enjoyed making my last video, and I think the combination of lifestyle and sharing the things I'm learning about programming as a junior is where I want to go with this channel. But there is one big problem with my current situation. You see, I've created a bunch of different full stack side projects, more on that later in the video, but as of now, I'm only programming for work, and since I'm not allowed to share much about that on this channel, I don't have much interesting to share. So in this video, I'm going to break down what I've learned about creating successful software side projects and share a step-by-step -step process that anyone can follow. I'll then use it to come up with my next idea, which I think is going to be good. So stay tuned until the end. All software starts with a good idea, and the easiest way to pick the right idea is to start with yourself. It's not just me saying this, I've heard it from some of the most successful programming YouTubers like Theo, Marco, and Webdev Cody. This is how I turn my goals into a software product. Let this line represent the divider between your interests and your goals. I'm interested in politics and keeping up with the news, tech and programming, sports, fitness and health, and most recently, filming. Some of my goals are growing this YouTube channel, improving my English vocabulary, getting back into competitive sports. Now, the strategy I use is to think of an app that's related to one of your interests and solves one of your goals. So for example, what about a software that runs in a user's news app or browser tab that lets them add words that they are not yet familiar with in order to revise them later? So I like the idea and I think I know how to build it as a browser extension. But before continuing, let's do the following checks. Is your product an MVP yet? MVP stands for Minimum Viable Product, and I like to think of it as the main set of features that your app needs in order to test whether there is a market for it. So for my app, the MVP features are store words directly from web pages in user's browser, view and edit words, highlight words on web pages that are also in the storage to revise them. Second check that you should do is, is the MVP easily verifiable? If your MVP requires months of development, then your scope is either too big for a side project or you haven't boiled the project down to its core features. Ideally, you should publish your MVP within a month and start pushing it. All right, so let me actually demo what I've built so far. And so keep this in mind, I built it in less than six hours. So if the idea flops, I haven't lost much time and I even gained some experience learning how to build browser extensions. But the concept is pretty simple. You can just select words and then save the word. Then you get a list of definitions that you can choose from. Let's just choose the first one. And then at the moment you have to refresh the page, but if you refresh the page, you get um, this word highlighted along with all the other words that you've added to the database. And then there's a pop-up which you can use to just edit or remove the words that you've already added. And if you hover over any of these words, you'll see their definitions. So like this, you can get kind of some uh, repetition in remembering the actual words. And yeah, so the concept is pretty simple. Like I said, barely any time invested and the MVP is almost ready. I just need to fix some bugs and make it a little bit smoother. And then I can just ship it and already test to see if there's a market for it by, for example, just letting my friends use it, who I know are also trying to increase their vocabulary, getting some feedback and just tracking whether they still use it. All right, so it's been a couple of days since I actually worked on the project. I managed to fix some bugs and it's basically ready to be shipped. So it's a beautiful day in Amsterdam, actually. The sun is shining. It's 20 degrees right now. Um, so everyone's out and about, except for me. I'm actually going to finish this project and also explain how actually browser extensions work and how I created this app in basically eight steps. So how browser extensions work and the first step is to actually set up a context menu. So what this code that's doing over here is basically adding a listener to whenever we highlight a certain word. So here you have this context kind of option that you can add to the object and you can say, for example, selection. So whenever that happens, basically send out a message. So if I highlight a word, it knows that it's selected. Chrome is gonna then send out that message and add this little save this word button, which kind of corresponds to this tile here. And if the actual user um, clicks that button, we have another context menu that's set up to listen for that event. So you can see here actually that I have an on clicked listener handler that checks to see if the message received corresponds to the correct ID. So here you can see the two IDs and if they correspond, we execute this function that basically fetches the definition. Um, so that's step one and step two, basically set up a context menu and set up a listener for um, whenever the user actually clicks on that context. And the fetch definition, that's just a basic 
API request to some public API to fetch a bunch of different definitions for the word. So you can see, for example, if I go canvas, save this word, then these are all the definitions that show up based on that API request. And in step four, we actually uh, send the definitions to what we call a content script in browser extensions. So this is all happening in a background script. So that's stuff that's running in the background. And a content script is um, where we can actually execute UI and change the, the HTML and CSS that is on the website that we're on. So we're going to take a look at that now. Okay, so we send the message and we give it an action name, which is this show definition selector. And we can then set up in our content script, if I look for step five, we can actually set up a uh, listener that listens to the background, the messages that the, are sent by the background script. So here we have the same thing going on. We listen to messages. And if the message action name is show definition selector, then we execute the function, which basically just puts this, this example that we showed, this HTML on the page. So you can see that we're actually inserting HTML and CSS into the website that we're on. So that's how that works. You can only do those in content scripts. You can't do them in background scripts. And that's kind of how the communication works between different tabs. They're called in browser extension. We send messages back and forth. So show definition selector, it creates a modal, um, finds the definition and just shows them to the user. And then in step six, if I find that real quick, we can also set up a on click uh, listener so that whenever the user clicks on the word that they want to insert, we can listen to that and then select and call a function that basically saves that word to our database. In this case, the database is just your Chrome local storage. I'm using that for the MVP because you're allowed to save five megabytes which should be plenty for just text. So again, we're listening to this action. And if that action happens, then we can actually execute a callback function that um, is going to highlight those saved words and also um, send a message. So we're sending a message back to the content, uh, back to the background script. So that should be step seven. Okay, step eight, apparently, it's going to now actually listen to the message we sent from the content script to save that word into the Chrome local storage. And then once it's saved, we execute the callback. So that's this callback here that actually um, waits to make sure that the database is in the most uh, recent state. And once it is, it actually calls this highlight saved word function, which traverses the HTML page you're on and finds the words that are in the database and also on the web page. So here you can see those words that are highlighted. And if you select a new word like canvas, save the word, click it, it's gonna then re-update and notice that canvas is on the page. And then you can see the definition that you added. So yeah, this is a very basic example of a browser extension. It's the MVP of the product. Next episode, I'm gonna make sure I ship it and basically test how verifiable it is by just seeing if anyone wants to use it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, yeah, we'll see uh, how the browser extension does in the next video.